Welcome back to r slash neighbors from hell, where people share stories about their crazy neighbors. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe to join our amazing community. And without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. And the first one is titled, Today I borrowed the neighbor's shower. I live in Southern California and today around 6pm my neighborhood blacked out and I was left with no Wi-Fi and no electricity. I checked the SDGE website and it says it is because of the raging forest fires. SDGE estimate power will return around midnight. I have no emergency lights except for the flashlight on my phone, 15% battery. My laptop was thankfully fully charged, I am a graduate student with a paper due at 11pm and a Zoom job interview with a corporation in Europe at 2am. Due to the virus there are no public seating areas with free Wi-Fi, I was kind of screwed. I packed my bags and drove to fast food that offered free Wi-Fi near me. Sat in the car and with minimal dim light from my crappy 1998 car, worked on my paper for a good hour or two. Sadly the internet connection was too slow for some of the research I needed to do for the paper and my bad third party mobile carrier hotspot also could not do the job. At this point I was sweaty, frustrated and my eyes were tired. I checked the SDGE website again and affected residents of my area went from 3000 to 300. Estimate time of complete repair was pushed back to 4 am. I drove home hoping to see my electricity has recovered, turns out half of the apartment complex in my community recovered and half didn't. Mine fell in the latter half. Ironically the apartments literally one walk away across from mine were all lit up as if rubbing it in my face. At this point it was 8.30 to 9pm ish, I decided to seek help from a neighbor. I recall a certain apartment often partied or watched TV until late night and they seemed like local college students. I knocked on said apartment and a girl probably in her early 20s answered in her PJs. I explained my dilemma and asked if I can borrow her Wi-Fi and her shower and if I can do my Zoom interview at 2am in her apartment. She said no problem and I got set up in her living room, finished the paper in time, finished readings for the class next day and when all is said and done it is after midnight. I have barely said a word to the girl, she was doing her own stuff in her room and clearly not interested in striking up a conversation. I knocked on her door and asked if it is okay for me to use the shower and if I can borrow a towel and her shampoo and body wash because I forgot to pack a towel etc when I left my apartment and I was too tired to walk back. She said yes and gave me a towel and told me to use the bathroom in the master bedroom, her bedroom, because the one in the hallway has a broken shower head and the bathtub is filthy. She took her laptop and charger out to the living room and I hopped into the shower. I noticed there were men and women shampoo and body wash in the shower so I figured she probably lives with her boyfriend but did not think much. My hair was so oily and sweaty I decided to wash it a second time after washing my hair and body. As I finished soaping up my hair I hear the bathroom door slam open and seconds later the curtain pulled aside. A burly dude stood there and I could immediately smell booze on his breath. His girlfriend was pulling at his arm and yelling at him to stop. He punched me hard in the face. I crumpled into the bathtub and he kept punching me as I curled into fetal position. Soap was in my eyes and I felt like I was in hell. After forever it finally stopped and he sat on the toilet. He told me to get out and I threw on my old sweaty clothes, scrambled to get everything and stumbled back to my apartment. Lights were still out, check time was around 1am. I looked at myself through my phone camera and saw that my face looked bruised and yucky, definitely not fit for an interview in an hour, I felt defeated, sat in my dark apartment and cried. I emailed the European corporation and asked if they could reschedule me to another day, I have an emergency and cannot make the 2am meeting. They didn't get back to me in time before 2am and I was too ashamed to log on. The power came back on around 3am and I am writing on reddit to distract myself from the inescapable sense of desperation and depression. Edit just to respond to some comments. 
I am not originally American and my English is not the best. Sorry about that. Number two, I did not call police because I see on TV the police overreact and always end up killing someone. The man was not Caucasian so I did not want to call the police. Number three, I am too poor to sue anyone or to go to hospital. I also don't have time to do it because of schoolwork and now I need to submit more apps to get a job. Number four, I don't know what the girl told her boyfriend or what he was thinking. They have not yet contacted me after that incident. And yeah guys, I gotta say, I was kind of surprised by how accommodating that woman was. Because I'm not sure if I would let a stranger, even though it is my neighbor, shower in my own apartment. Would you guys let him do that? Let us know in the comments. And the next one is titled, Today I screwed up by returning a pizza cutter to my new neighbor. This happened six months ago, we just moved into a new house, we had a bunch of friends help us move and we naturally got some take and bake pizza, because people who help you move deserve pizza. It is the least we could do, queue pizza time and we realize we have no pizza cutter. This could have been foreseen since all our stuff was in boxes, but things like that fall through the cracks because moving is stressful. No big deal, one of our friends goes over to a neighbor's house and the guy generously lends his pizza cutter. Couple days later I head over to the neighbor's house to return said pizza cutter. I am feeling pretty peppy since I have a good reason to meet a neighbor, there's definitely a little bounce in my step. I ring the doorbell and a woman opens the door a quarter of the way. I am only 95% sure I am in the right house, so I lead with, I think I have your pizza cutter, and I quickly whip it up in front of me. Remember, I'm feeling a little peppy, so my movement was a bit quick. Also, pizza cutter was borrowed from a guy. This lady presumably has no idea that her husband lent out their pizza cutter. So naturally, when the strange man at the door flips up a knife-like object in front of him, she shrieked and slammed the door shut. The next three seconds felt like three minutes as I put all the pieces together. She was putting some pieces together too and reopens the door like one sixteenth of the way. I sheepishly say, I believe this is your pizza cutter. We are your new neighbors and maybe we borrowed it from your husband the other day. The next minute was filled with profuse apologies on both sides. I gave her the pizza cutter and then went home. A few weeks later my wife saw her and they chatted and laughed about the pizza cutter incident, so all is well. Clarifications number one, our pizza cutter was in a box, also in boxes, knives, scissors, machetes, really all of our sharp pizza cutting objects were packed away. That is why we didn't just use a knife, we would have but we didn't have one available and yes we did look through a few boxes. Number two, to everyone saying we should have just ordered pizza from a restaurant, yeah probably we should have. Our stressed out moving brains had decided that take and bake was the better option, I'm not going to try and defend that position but it is what we chose to do. But you are right, we should have just ordered pizza from somewhere. And guys, is it just me or is that also the same for you? When you read about pizza or fast food, I really get the urge to eat pizza or fast food that day. This especially pertains to pizza. Whenever I see like a good commercial about pizza or something, I just have the need to order pizza that day. Anyway, if you have watched until here, please don't forget to post some star emojis in the comments to show your support. And also, it would be wonderful if you could like the video. Thank you so much in advance. And the next one is titled, My neighbor abused his dog so I dog napped it and took it to a rescue farm to live on. The person who lives directly across the street from me is a disgusting old guy who is the epitome of the awful neighbor. He's the type of guy that will call the cops if he sees a car parked more than a foot from the curb or if someone's grass is half an inch too tall for his liking. He had a German Shepherd that he kept outside 24-7 and tied to a chain. The dog had maybe a circumference of about 6 feet in which to roam because the chain was so short and it always spilled the small bucket of water. I probably filled that water bucket more than the dog's owner did. One day I saw him grab the dog by the head, pick him up off the ground and throw him at the wall of the porch because the dog had pissed on the walkway and not in the grass. I marched over to his locked gate and began screaming at him to knock it the f off lest I call the police on him. 
He told me to mind my own business and drag the dog inside. I decided right then and there that by hook or by crook I was getting that dog away from that guy. I got in contact with a friend of a friend who runs a private no-kill shelter on a huge farm. She said she would be more than pleased to take the German Shepherd and not question where it came from. I waited about a week for the next time he left the dog outside while he was gone, I walked across the street, cut the padlock on the gate with bolt cutters and freed the dog. He bounded into my car and I began the 90 minute trek out into the country to take the dog to his new home. He fell in love with that farm from the moment he jumped out of my car when we arrived and the lady who runs the shelter absolutely adores him. Despite his previous lot in life, he's a very happy and playful dog and shows almost no lingering effects from his mistreatment. By the time I got back to my place the neighbor was home, he saw me pull into my driveway and asked if I had seen his dog, I did not even look at him and said nope before going inside and letting loose with a super villain chuckle. The dog is doing great at his new home and is back to a healthy weight. The neighbor seemingly forgot about him after a few days as I haven't heard of him ask anything further about the dog. Another neighbor told me that the a-hole assumes the dog ran away, you know, because dogs are capable of cutting a padlock and opening a latched gate. If I see that guy ever get another animal, I'm going to take it to the farm too, only won't wait so long this time. And guys, as some people say, some heroes don't wear capes, but this guy is really an awesome dude if you ask me. Dog napping gone right, so to say. And you know guys, speaking of dogs, I gotta say one of the things that really irks me, if that is the right word here in Thailand, is that Thai people, usually, at least a majority, don't really have dogs as pets like we do in the West, but a lot of Thais, especially shop owners, really enjoy feeding street dogs, but then not giving them any further care. Like, they would not think about getting them vaccinated or going to a vet or anything, they just feed them so those dogs come back again and again. And the next one is titled, you have a terrible drainage system and you don't want to help me? Your downstream neighbor fix it? Enjoy losing your tenants. This bit of malicious compliance has been developing for some time and yesterday and today it has finally borne fruit. The area we live in has changed drastically in the last decade or so. Almost all of our neighbors have pulled down their homes and have constructed apartment buildings. The problem is that the sewer system is quite old and is not built to handle the current volume of waste. A Chinese company is in the process of constructing a new sewer system, so the old line experiences a lot of blockage. In our home we have a septic tank, we use the sewer system only as a drain for rainwater, the compound is about halfway up a hill. The upper boundary has a live fence but the lower side next to the road has a wall. This essentially means that when it rains, water from up the hill can flow into our compound but has no outlet. The dirt road on the other side of the wall is also poorly built and pools a lot of water next to our wall. So to get rid of rainwater, there is an underground connection from the lowest point in our compound to the sewer line which runs parallel to the wall on the other side of the road. It is not the most ideal setup, but it has worked for decades. Anyway, the new constructions have overtaxed the existing system, when there is a blockage the backflow ends up in our yard since it is the lowest exit. There are about 5 apartment buildings upstream of our connection, each with over 30 units, so the backflow is usually pretty heavy. Most of the times we react quickly and remove the blockage, but it is really a pain in my ass. To add on to this, the caretakers for the 5 apartment buildings don't do anything to help me. So last week the Chinese construction cut into the existing line. However, they just filled the hole with the breach with dirt and carried on without telling anyone. I came home to a stinky flooded compound with pieces of crap floating by. I call my usual guys but they are not around, so I decide it is time for the upstream caretakers to help out. I find 3 of the 5 chilling, I will be me, they will be C1, C2, C3, conversation translated from native language. Me, hey guys, the sewer line is blocked, I need a hand. C1, why are you always bothering us with this, it's your problem. Me, it is our problem, we all use this line, you need to contribute to its maintenance. We have moved to the new Chinese system, my building doesn't use the old one anymore. This was a lie, the Chinese construction was being done in stages and it was nowhere near our street. 
Me? Guys, we are all moving to the new line when it gets here. Just help me out until we can switch. C2, pissed at being called out. That is not our problem. You handle it however you want. We don't care. Deal with your own stuff. This really pissed me off since they had no idea how much I did for them. You want me to deal with my crap however I want? Sure thing. First of all, I found the location where the blockage was. Luckily, the crew were still there and they were super chill in helping me unblock it, although I had to buy new pipes to repair the section they had broken and also bought them some tea, if you know what I mean. Corruption is a cancer in my country. But I didn't stop there. Motivated by the caretaker's arrogance, I asked some of the guys to help me out the following day. Basically, what we did was we removed the connection between our compound and the sewer line. Instead, we leveled the depression in the road right outside our wall to allow rainwater to flow freely down slope and then we removed a brick from the bottom of the wall to give rainwater an exit from our compound. All I had to do was wait. Yesterday afternoon, the crew working on the Chinese construction caused another blockage on the old line. Again, they did not tell anyone, they only covered it up with dirt and rocks just like before. By dusk, the five apartment buildings started feeling the blockage. The people living on the ground floor, some of them my friends, start to complain. Apartments are getting flooded, sink drains are not working, toilets are not flushing well. Showers smell of crap and are flooded with grey water. This evening, almost all the ground floor residents in the two closest apartment buildings are moving out. The stench in the houses is unbearable. I just laugh as I help my friends move, the caretakers are too ashamed to ask me for help. They have no idea where the blockage could be since they have never had to fix one before. I am not about to tell anyone. Update, so just an update, the caretakers move pretty quick. Turns out they are not bad at their jobs, only needed some motivation. They, all five, managed to fix the blockage by the afternoon, although by then a third apartment building had begun experiencing some difficulty. A couple more people moved out, but I think it is mostly due to the smell lingering around the buildings. As I am writing this, I have just come from looking in on the damage. The caretakers are still cleaning houses, will cost a pretty penny to fix up. I doubt they will be habitable for the next couple of months or so. The three caretakers whose buildings have been affected are pretty cross with me. There have been some threats about reporting me to the owners of the buildings, but I'm not too worried about that. I am sure the owners will come wondering why they are suddenly spending a lot of money for repairs, but they are friends of the family. People I have known ever since I was a kid when this community was still small, so I'm sure there won't be a problem. The drainage system we built a few days ago is yet to be tested by rain, so fingers crossed. In any case, I won't be moving back to the previous system. Some of the comments here prompted me to do some research and I realized that diverting storm water into the sewer line is a terrible thing to do, so I'm not doing that again. Otherwise, I think my malicious compliance has come to an end. Thank you guys for your comments, I learned new things and particularly enjoyed the crappy puns. Take care and stay fresh. By the way, I was wrong, the repercussions seemed to be snowballing, they apparently couldn't wait and decided to build a line to meet the Chinese construction. And well guys, that just shows sometimes it can be definitely beneficial to help your neighbors out. Otherwise, there might be a crappy surprise waiting for you. And the last one is titled, Karen called CPS on us because we got tested. So, Karen does not care for us since I was pregnant with my child, we only knew her because my husband was friends with mine. When she visited us I was pregnant and she said everything I should do while pregnant and how to raise her. I thanked her for the advice and said I will try some of it sometime. She soon was getting bad by saying how we would be bad parents because I said how I wanted to let my child learn both her father and mine religion till she got old enough so she can choose her own religion. We figured this will also teach her to accept every religion and people of all races. We shrugged it off as it was her opinion, but in the end it is how we raise our child. We didn't hear any more till we got a bad cold and our doctor suggested to get tested. We wanted to tell all of my husband's friends so they could know how to be safe and later it did turn out to be negative, but they all exploded. The Karen yelled at us for being inconsiderate for trying to infect her family. Note we messaged everyone on Facebook and didn't go anywhere till was done with quarantine after tested. 
Karen forced her husband to no longer be friends with my husband and thought that was that till today. We received a visit from CPS four months later saying how we don't buckle our child in and even neglect her. I showed them how our child was perfectly healthy, ate the right amount, sees the doctors, healthy movements and is developed on time. We showed her even the house making sure she saw how our child was in a loving, caring home. That is when she told us that they were getting calls since the month we got tested. This honestly is hurtful, cause just because you hate how a person parents and try to do the right thing and let people know they got tested, doesn't mean you should try and take a child from a loving home. Edit, wow, thanks for everyone's comments and support, we actually got more information today from friends who were talking to Karen. So Karen told our friends that not only did she call CPS because since we got tested it meant our child was not safe to be around people, that went to get the virus making it sound like my husband and I were just running around without masks, like we are trying to get positive but what we really did was have one of us go to the stores maybe two or three days a week at the start to find diapers since we had two big boxes but they were going quick so we wanted to get more but it was difficult to find. We are fully stocked now having family send diapers to is from Amazon and a lot of wipes. Even neighbors from the community kindly gave us some they didn't need anymore because their child was too big. The other reason Karen doesn't want us to have our daughter is she thinks my husband and I are toxic for each other. Two years before our child was conceived my husband and I had a huge fight and almost got divorced but we decided to try marriage counseling and different ways of communicating that helped a lot. Though she doesn't think we should have stayed together because she has friends that had tons of kids to save their marriage and they became effed up while stating if we did get divorced a child needs to be in a whole family with both parents. So basically if my husband and I are not like her or how she raised her child we don't deserve our baby. For those that don't know or haven't seen the comment she does have one daughter about elementary school age and she doesn't really raise her. When her husband comes home from work she will pass her child off to him to either go out somewhere to hook up with girls or do something else. Not sure what now with the virus. She is also sadly controlling of her husband by not letting him go to friends without her permission, not allowed to play any games for him to relax and even saying he is just to watch their child while she does things on his day off or after work. Her husband did talk about divorcing her but is sadly scared too because he doesn't want to lose his daughter and she keeps holding their child over him. Honestly this was all we just heard as of today so if more information comes I will keep updating. Also we are going to hire a lawyer for false claims the next time CPS comes since we didn't have anything to hide so I thought it might put a stop to it once they saw our daughter is safe. And guys unfortunately we have already reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's stories and if you haven't already please also go to patreon.com slash ripe youtube where I upload exclusive reddit videos starting at just three dollars a month. This is a great way to support me in case you are interested and the chance for me to become independent from youtube revenue. Thank you so much for watching, please don't forget to subscribe and like the video and I hope to see you again tomorrow.